Hello and welcome to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck and I get to interview the most interesting people. Uh, forward, my goodness. Uh, this is not the way it all began at Better Life Television, but let's find out the roots of this story from my guest, Evelyn Wagner. Welcome. Thank you, Bernie. I'm glad to be here. You've brought your books. I did. And that tells the whole story? Well, it tells what I wanted to tell. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with you falling madly in love with the student? The well, to somewhat, yes. Because when Delmer and I met, we were both uh, juniors in high school. And so that was a long time ago. And uh, our first date, he had just gotten out of the hospital. And uh, I had no idea that he was even going to keep it. I mean, my life has been interesting ever since I met him many years ago. And where was this that you were at? This is at Walla Walla College Academy at the high school oh. there. Washington State. And <clears throat> I have a diploma from that school, but I really didn't attend it either. So, okay. But I'm glad to learn that. Um, was it he didn't propose to you on the first date? You were just young people. We were quite young. In fact, we went together for four years before we, well, four years before we got married. And we weren't engaged very long. Ah. Well, <clears throat> what can you tell me about these books? Well, this book, Patty and the Briefcase, over here, as soon as, right after we were married, um, Delmer wanted to go to, to Canada to call Porter. Now, to I didn't sell books. To sell books, to uh, going house to house and selling books. It was a lot different then. Christian? Christian books, children's books, health books. Um, we had a lot of different kinds of books. And he had gone the summer before and he had made his whole way through college for that next year. And so, of course, he wanted me to sell books, but he said I wouldn't didn't need to sell books because he would do twice as well if I went along. Oh. It sounded really good. Very you know. romantic. Uh. Well, the very first day he went out, he talked me into going out too. And that very first day when he drove into town, I said, I'm not going to get out here. He said, well, where do you want to get out? And I, we drove across town. He said, do you want to get out here? And I said, no. So we drove back to where we were before and he said, there's a lady out in her garden. That would be easy to sell her books. And so I got out of the car, and she saw me coming, and she turned and ran into the house. And so I go, what do I do now? And I turned around to ask him, and of course he was gone. Oh, no, you're back up. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, this is terrible. I straightened my shoulders, and I walked to that house, and nobody was going to know how I felt. And I knocked on the door, and the lady came to the door, and she said, what do you have? Come on in, real quietly. And so I came in, and the table was piled full of things. There was no place to sit. The chairs were piled full of things. And so she said, when I told her about the book, she said, I want a, I want a whole set of children's books. Oh. And, of course, I was thrilled, so I cleaned off part of the table, sat down, and I had no idea how to write out an order because I never didn't think I was going out. And so I was sitting there. Cleaned off the chair, cleaned up a little piece of the table, sitting there trying to figure out what to do. Because she said, as she left the room, she said, how much down payment do you want? Well, I didn't know. She said, is $5 enough? enough? And I said, sure, because I had no idea what it was supposed to be. I thought Delmer would do all that. <laughs> and while I was sitting there, I didn't hear the door open behind me. I didn't hear footsteps behind me. All I heard was right behind me, I heard a deep man's voice, said, <coughs> <coughs> you know, just, uh, <laughs> and I whirled around, and he was the biggest man I think I've ever seen. At least he looked the biggest to me. And I was so afraid, I couldn't say a word. And he was looking at me, and I was looking at him. And I had my pictures spread on the floor because there wasn't any other place to put them. And I don't know how long we looked at each other. I was so afraid. He didn't say a word. I thought, he's got to know why I'm sitting in his house. And I finally motioned to the pictures and said, pretty, aren't they? And he goes, mm -hmm, and went in the other room. Had his, it was early in the morning because it was our first, first house, but he went into the bedroom. So 
The wife came out, put the $5 in my hand, opened the door, and I got the message, get out of here. <laughs> and I got out, and I go, wow, the Lord really is with me. I wasn't supposed to say anything. And so then I, I felt so much better. Well, I'm glad you didn't follow that advice today, because I've never <laughs> heard that story. But it's tough to do, go on your first job. It really, really is. I, I went to see if I could get a caregiver job when I was 16, and she didn't like me at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was going to be some light housework, and I figured I could do light housework. Of course. And she was sick, so. Um, but the story then is about what happens to what you. What happened that one summer? All now, if Delmer things. was telling the story, he would tell about the time I went into the, to the swamp. I'd run out of gas, and the man was, came to fill my car with gas. And while I was turning it around, of course, my gas gauge didn't work. And so as I was turning it around, I didn't know the fluid run out of the brakes. I ran right into the swamp. That's the story he thinks is so funny. I didn't think it was funny. <laughs> he would tell that one or how I ended up in a saloon. And it was against the law for a woman to be in a saloon in Saskatchewan 60-some years ago. Oh, yeah. That was, we had yeah, a lot of experiences. Because Walla Walla isn't that far from the Canadian border. Well, we were in Saskatchewan. Okay, Saskatoon. so that's a ways. Oh, you want to start with another one of these? Well, Patty's Journey in Faith, after I'd written Patty in the briefcase, people said, well, what happened next? So the next one just tells what happened next. And does that have uh, the moves to uh, rural America? Yes, that is where we moved way up into the mountains because Delmer wanted to make his own electricity. And that is where I was going for a walk one night with my big German shepherd. It wasn't a night, it was just getting dusk. And I had turned on my flashlight because it was just beginning to get dusk. And my dog took off. Of course, that was a long time ago. And so I took off because I wanted to see, what is he ch chasing? And then he stopped at the tree and looked, kind of looked up. And I looked up, and Bernie, I'm telling you the feelings. When you look up in a tree right above you and are looking eyeball to eyeball with a mountain lion, oh, the, it's just a different feeling that it wasn't. And he's so, in the tree. He's crouched up in a limb right above my head, just a little Which, ways above my head. Which means he's probably thinking about pouncing. It, he looked like it. Of course, he had run up that tree probably when the dog was chasing him. And he wasn't paying a bit of attention to the dog. He was looking straight at me, and I was looking straight at him. So I gradually put my flashlight right on him and started backing up and backing up and backing up until I came to a corner. And then I called my dog and ran to the house as fast as I could. <laughs> well, this house that you live in, it is unique, and it was very unique when it was built, what, 30 you, years? 30 some years ago, 30 plus years ago, a little over 30. And people said you cannot be off the grid unless you have batteries or you have, you know, candles or whatever, and Delmer being a... Well, yes, because he... In, inventor. Inventor. He, he, well, that's really why he bought the place. Because when he was a kid, Bernie, probably about 10 years old, they lived up in Sykes Creek. And 70 plus years ago, there was no electricity up above Rogue River, up in the mountains above Rogue River. So he and his brother built a, a little canal and made their own electricity. They had one light bulb. Everybody else was using lamps. So he couldn't wait to get back to Southern Oregon and have a rushing creek where he could make electricity. And so that's why he bought this place where we moved out to, where the cougars were and the bears were and the, everything else. <laughs> to raise children? Well, the children were, had gone away to school by the time we moved out mm. there. Because you have a son and a daughter. Right. And how many grandchildren? Five. Five <gasps> grandchildren. Lucky lady. I am, and one great granddaughter. <laughs> Go ahead and brag. <laughs> okay, I could. <laughs> now, we're talking about these youngsters here. 
And this is taken in 19 and? 1953. 53. And look at those. Ooh. Now, this dress is a very um, modern, um, let's say, city-fied for a little girl to get married and go to live <laughs> off the <I'll> grid. <laughs> That's a long ways, lady. Well, I suppose. Now, you were used to city. No, town. not really, not really. Oh, where are you from? I am, I'm an Oregonian. I uh, grew up in central Oregon, not too far from Bend, Terrebonne, Oregon. And uh, really, I was raised on the farm. My folks raised potatoes and oh and hay and things like that and my brother had a great time on the farm it was okay so this is the book that tells that story hmm? that is more my grandfather great grandfather yeah great grandfather grandfather and father stories my daddy told me because my great grandfather was in Scotland and when the War was Revolutionary War. They were, maybe it's my great great grandfather. I'd better check that out. And uh, they hired the people from over there. They brought them on a ship over to fight George Washington. And when they got to the over here, they changed and helped him. They joined his army. They were traitors, to tell the truth. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Turncoat, huh? But that's how he got his start. And uh, so you're true Americans. That. that is true. <laughs> and that's in this book. Evelyn, you must just love to write. I, I do. I do. I've always loved to write. Because you've written this one. Yes. We can thank you for putting Better Life TV in black and white. That is true. That. Um, I wrote it because so many things happened, and it was really the Lord that did it. Okay. Now, this tells about the little beginnings when people said to your husband, it'll never work. Oh, of course they did. See, when we got a uh, satellite dish, and we would listened to 3ABN, they really had wonderful programs programs that you don't usually get on television. So we took th these and started copying them. And oh. then we bought them and got another copy machine and was giving them to everybody, our friends. And Delma just said, everybody should be getting these, these uh, programs. And so he looked into it and he said, we need to have a television station here, just like that. And do you blame people for thinking that was pie in the sky? Well, wasn't there only one television in all of Southern Oregon? Probably. I mean, that, this is what, 19 and? Well, probably about 1987 at that time. And what did people outside the area say to you and Delmer? Well, no matter where Delmer went, he talked about the new TV, and he was kind of encouraging people to, because we'd put what we could, our money into it, and everything takes just just trying to get this, the license took a lot of money. And if you made one mistake, threw the whole thing out, you had to do it all over again, pay all over again. And so he was asking for donations after we got um, kind of underway. And I was, Delmer, if you keep talking about television to everybody, all of our friends, we won't have any friends left. <laughs> did that work? Did that, did that really happen? Not really, but a few people. Oh, just... but there's so many hundreds of us lined up behind just applauding <laughs> what Delmer did. Well, it was different when we were first starting. I understand. But who, Dave who and Ed... Have vision from this little valley. I mean, folks, Roke Valley is, uh, I call it the hollow of God's hand, but it has <laughs> nothing but a, mountains around a river and a valley there. And to put a signal to any place. It's true. That is true. 
It, it, they went over a lot of mountains. Delmer climbed that Tin Pan Peak. It's in Rogue River. That's probably, since we live out of Rogue River, that's probably one of the first ones he really started climbing. You couldn't get up there with it, any kind of a vehicle, so he climbed it. And Anne Reed and Dave Reed lived across the river up on another hill, and they'd see Delmer going up and down that mountain. And that's when they decided Delmer needed help. And they were very visionary people, and they were so encouraging. And so that was really encouraging. And she is the one that first started uh, interviews. And that's right. And that's when you started, Bernie. Remember? Right. <laughs> I do. She's, she asked me to be on a program committee. And then I said, well, I thought interviews. I mean, Oprah does it. And people love to watch other people's stories. I said, we could do it here. They and said, who would do it? And I said, well, I'll do the legwork. You find the host. <laughs> they never did find a host, so they, oh, go ahead. <laughs> and that's my story. That is just fantastic. Oh, I remember. I remember that. And then Anne said, after a few of these, finally she got the, the church put on programs. That was really hard to get them to put on programs. And now it's a big thing. Oh, yes. Now, back to you and this writing. I mean, do you also go up to these mountains? Oh, I did at first. Car I mean, carrying things? No, I am very glad once I've gotten up to Bitter Light, up to Tin Pan Peak once. And I tell you that, I didn't carry anything besides myself. <laughs> <laughs> because these are steep, I mean, the reason that the repeaters are on those mountains is because they're the highest point. Right, so they can get out over the valley. And it's hard to find where there's, to find the right mountain. In fact, ja, ja, Jack Ivy and Dave and Delmer used to go in Jack's airplane out looking for places to put the antennas. Interesting, I didn't know that story. Yeah, he took them out several times. And we'd go up in our car and it was hard. And then my dad loaned his Brancos so Delmer could go where our car wouldn't go. Not good if you don't like heights. <laughs> well, now, this looks to me like a party picture. Why don't you tell me what's happening here? Oh, that was Delmer and my 50th wedding anniversary. The kids really did a great job for us. And I got to go to that party. And there were hundreds of guests. They came that was, to wish you well. Yeah, we had about many relatives that came from several states. And it was, it was fun. It was fun. Now, what's it done for you um, when Delmer has to go? He, I mean, he had to make uh, trips to get people to agree that even this could happen. You've mm -hmm. gone all sorts of places. Oh, we have. We've gone a lot of places. I think the biggest thing was when, after we got on the air, and he'd have to make the trips up to repair the antennas in the wintertime. That was the hardest on me. Like Christmas Eve, um, all the relatives were there, and somebody called and said the television was out down by Cave Junction, I think it was. So he and Pastor Bob took off. They didn't and I told the family, we better go ahead because who knows when they'll get in. And they didn't get in until really late. But that was a normal thing. And um, I mean, night or day, people would call and say, the television, you know, my television's off. And he took it pretty seriously at that time. Well, you mean his repairman? Well, he, at first he was doing everything. You know, Pastor Bob was helping and, and um, different. But yeah, he was the main repairman. When you say Pastor Bob. Pastor Bob Heisler. See, when we first started, people thought this was a pipe dream. But after he, Pastor Bob Heisler started helping us, then it became a project, not just somebody's pipe dream. And as more people joined in, it was a project. That was a lot more fun. Oh, I can. It's always more fun to do things as a group. That is certainly <laughs> true. <laughs> um, what can you tell me about your 
involvement. The people you've met, the things that have made a difference in your life because of Better Life Television. Oh, it has been very exciting. We have been able to go down to Southern California to different media conventions and uh, just met a lot of people that you see on television. And going back to ASI, which is where people meet and... Uh, Businessmen and women. That's right. That's what it is. Tell their stories. And, and Better Life has encouraged other people to get online, on air. Oh, yes. I mean, when, when about the time Better Life was starting, Delmer met with people and he talked with somebody and, and was talking, I think it was, I can't remember his name right now, and talked, and another station started up in Walla Walla, Blue Mountain, I believe it was, that started. And he, had, he wasn't involved physically like he's down here, but several went up in Central Oregon that he talked to the people. He talked about Better Life television wherever he went. <laughs> and what is the story about Better Life? It's the largest network with with the uh, 3ABN I'm sure it is and it was the first uh, full power station now that was a challenge getting channel 30 because that was well it was a big thing and better life television was so little we had a the board members at that time they voted it down not to buy Channel 30, because it was too big for us. And of course, Delmer couldn't sleep that night, and the very next day, he called another board meeting. <laughs> and then it was voted to go ahead, but not everybody was happy. Some of them, some of the board members resigned because they didn't they think it didn't could be done. They didn't have the vision. That's the whole thing. They didn't have a vision. Now, Delmer's always had vision. He grew up where? Right here in Rose up in the mountains out of Rogue River. Up Sykes Creek Road is where it was. With one light light. That's right, that's right. And when I met him, he had his own business. He was a, a junior in high school. He had his own business repairing radios because that's the thing he liked. And so he's making his own way, all of his own way, paying his expenses. Now, the two of you have made quite an imprint on the valley. Your contributions here with all these wonderful books and where are they available and how can people purchase them? And um, They're on Amazon.com. That's what we need to know yes. using the latest technology <laughs> and these um, you can buy one or four through Amazon. Right and they're e-books e now too. Oh all the better. Mm -hmm. How modern can you get, <laughs> Evelyn? We have a friend, a mutual friend, who's in Key West, Florida, and she'll get a copy of this because she also has vision. That is true. That is Her true. name is Juanita Kretschmar. She is, uh, and if you're ever in Key West, go to Key Encounter. That is worth seeing. What's it like? I haven't been there as late as you have been there, Bernie. Right. But we were over there before the last big uh, was, section was put up. And they have, it's nature, it's great big um, movie, I mean it's, it's there's a whole theater room. in the round. There you go. Oh, yeah, and because I think of you young people there in college who would have imagined that you would have been in the forefront of technology, the two of you. That is true. With, with your husbands walking. I mean, there's not a, a bit of this that isn't the two of you together, is it? Well, not really. Sometimes I try to put on the brakes a little bit. Okay, <laughs> you and so. <laughs> but I, ha I was tired, yeah, no, yeah. And the it same with the Kretschmars. Absolutely. They Absolutely. Went. 
And the Lord is blessed with long life. And, and this is the reason I was so anxious to get you on and interview you where your side of the story. How would you tell other people whose husbands and wives have dreams? Well, I think it's, we did a lot of praying. <laughs> and I do think the Lord, the Lord leads. When you, and uh, oh, it's just, it's wonderful to work with him. It's just exciting. It's really exciting. You never know where he'll lead you. So are you telling me it's kind of a triangle at your house? Husband, wife, and God is the foundation? Oh, absolutely. He is, he is the one that does the leading, I think, you know. And we just kind of follow along and go, whoa, really? <laughs> so your, your pr job has really been archival. This is wonderful that these are available, and they're available any place in the world. Just That's right. And I think that Barnes & Noble, there's quite a few places where a person could get these. But Amazon.com, I like. And Better Life TV is available around the world. That is, isn't that exciting? Yes. That is so exciting. All you do is tune to betterlifetv.tv. Tune down to whatever program you want to see, including Journeys and Journals, and this will be up in just a short time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Evelyn. It's been Thank a pleasure for being, being with you, Bernie. I'm Bernie Martin Beck, just saying thanks for tuning in, and keep on keeping on, folks. Be of good cheer.